All right, do you like superhero movies? Do you like uh, fusion animations? Well, I got both of those for you today. If you like one or the other, I think you're still gonna enjoy this video. Okay, we're gonna see how good I am. We have animation A and animation B. One is Marvel and one is me. We're gonna learn how to create this really cool kind of retro vibe 60s futuristic new Marvel logo from the new Fantastic Four trailer. All right, put down in the comments below, which one do you think is mine? A or B? I'll let you know at the end of the video. I'm gonna show you some interesting tricks that make it really easy to create this animation. Um, if you're interested in learning Fusion, the best way to do it is to pick an animation, dive in, and start connecting nodes up. Um, the more you do, the better, better you get. So if you're interested in learning Fusion, creating, kind of follow along with this, um, I think it'll be really helpful for you. All right, I'm jumping in here. This video is so good that I'm gonna break it up into two parts. So part one today, we're gonna to take a look at how to set up the, the block Marvel text, the uh, background and the star. And then in part two, we're gonna animate the studio text, build a photo frame around it, and do all sorts of great animation. Well, I saw the new Fantastic Four trailer. Movie looks like it could be good. We'll have to see. I really like the kind of the retro future 60s kind of vibe thing. And it had this new Marvel logo. And I kind of looking at it, it's like, well, how could we do that in Fusion? It turns out there's some really interesting techniques that uh, that we can use and learn. Did you guys see the trailer? Uh, I'm not sure if you have, but uh, I know that other Fantastic Four movies have not been that great. Maybe this one will be good. I don't know. Are you guys interested in seeing it? Is it something you're looking forward to? Do you even like superhero movies? Yeah, I kind of enjoy them. I think they're, they're fun, interesting. Um, as long as there's a good story, good characters, movies are good. To make this animation, there's a gradient background. There's kind of a roughed up photo frame. We have the Marvel text with the block letters the studio text with the alternating letters kind of going up and down. So some go down, some go up with the lines going across with a star that comes in. And then there's some animation and kind of a little bit of movement and it's blurred out stars. It's, it starts out blurred and kind of gets clear as the animation goes. So let's see if we can build it. All right, we have a blank fusion composition and we're gonna start creating this Marvel logo. I'm gonna show you a couple real quick tips to get started with that's gonna make this animation a lot easier to create. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a background image and drag it into the node area, connect the output of the background to the media out. So we're gonna build everything on top of this black background. So the first trick is that we're gonna use a reference image. So we're gonna put the Marvel logo image in and build everything on top of it so we can kind of get the spacing and sizing really close to what we're looking for. It's a really great way to set up your animations is to build them on top of another image. So we're gonna take this reference image and bring it into the node area and take the output of the media in and merge it on top of this background. And here we go, we have our reference image which is gonna make it really easy to align and space all of the text, graphics, and animations we're gonna be creating. Let's start by creating the Marvel text with each letter in a box and the boxes are kind of shifted in an alternating pattern. So we're gonna take a text node and drag it into the node area, click the F2 key and we're gonna call it Marvel text. And we're gonna take the output of Marvel text and drag it right on top of this merge. And you can see we, right there it says custom title. So we can see what it is. So we're gonna take a transform node and put it right in between merge text and merge two. And we're just gonna shift this text up just a little bit. Now that we have some text, we're gonna edit it to kind of make it in the same style and format as the Marvel text. So click on Marvel text node, and we're gonna type in Marvel. And obviously we need to use a different font. So we're gonna choose um, this Acme font here. And let's make it a little bit bigger. So we want the letters to be roughly the same size as the, so the M and the M and the A and the A. Let's make it a little bit bigger roughly the same size, that'll be, that'll be close enough. Okay, now that we have the text, let's put the boxes around it. And to do that, we're gonna use the shading elements. The shading tools in Fusion allow you to add outlines, um, borders, effects, um, all kinds of things on your text. So in the inspector with that text selected, hit shading, and we're gonna choose number four. And this is gonna add a blue border to each of the letters. So let's enable that. And you'll see blue border there. And when you scroll down here, you'll see that you can apply it to the, the whole, all the text, the line, the word, and we're gonna, we want this border to be applied to each of the characters. And we can extend the horizontal and adjust the vertical position. So let's kind of make it a little bit smaller. And we're gonna bring this horizontal extent down so you can kind of see where all the boxes are. Okay, one thing you'll notice is the boxes for the Marvel text, they're kind of the same size. And you'll see that each of these boxes on our Marvel text, they're all different sizes. And this is because we have a variable space font. And there's a really great tip to fix this that's gonna make it a lot easier to space things out evenly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click um, text and scroll down and you'll see this advanced controls on the bottom. We'll open that up and we're gonna just slide the force monospace all the way over. And that's gonna, what that force monospace does is it's gonna make sure that each of the letters, no matter how big the character is, is gonna take up the same horizontal space. That's gonna get us some even spacing. So we're gonna take the tracking up here and we're gonna bring it out 
and you'll see that all those letters are kind of on top of the boxes. We're using this as a reference. And we need to make our blue boxes a little bit bigger. So we're going to go to shading and we're going to just bring up the horizontal extent. And make them a little bit, make them a little bit bigger. And we're going to bring it down just like right in there. I'm going to make our text a touch bigger and just do some quick adjustments. All right, that's pretty close. It's good enough for this animation. Now we're going to do the offset boxes where they're kind of shifted one way and then alternating shift in the other. So what we're going to use for that is we're going to go to this transform tab and right here where it says shear, we're just going to change the shear Y and we got exactly kind of the same effect. We'll line it up so it's pretty close. All right, that's going to work great, but you'll notice that they have alternating letters. So every other letter is kind of shifted and sheared in a different direction. So what we'll, let's what we're going to do, so let's move this up here. We're going to highlight the Marvel text and hit Control C to copy it. Click in the node area and hit Control Shift V. And this is going to create an instance. And we're going to take the output of this instance and merge it on with the other text. So we're going to have these two Marvel texts merged on top of each other. And then we're going to take this one and let's add a transform node so you can see what's going on here. So there's a transform node and we're just going to shift this one up. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to flip it the other way. So this one is Marvel text and let's go over here and you'll see, we're going to use an expression to do this. You'll see, well, let's over the, over the shear Y and you'll see in the bottom left, it says Marvel text character shear Y. So we're just going to use that for our expression. Let's go to the instance text. This is going to be the one on the top. Click on transform and right click on Y and we're going to say D instance. I'm going to right click and choose expression. And we're just going to say Marvel text character shear Y and that ties it to the other one, but we don't want it to be exact. We want it to actually be the inverse. So right, right now you see the character shear is minus 25. So we're just going to go times negative one and that shifted them. And now this set is shifted the other way and we go to the regular Marvel text. We can adjust the Y and they're both going to be proportional. See how that works. All right. That's looking good. And we'll just set this back to minus 25. Oh, that did not work. We went minus 0.25. And that'll probably be a lot better. Okay, so we have one set of text with it being sheared this way and the other set of text being sheared that way. Because all the characters are the exact same horizontal width, we can just add a space to knock out one of those characters and it's gonna the space is not going to compress everything. It's all going to be spaced out properly. So let me show you what I'm doing. So if we go to this Marvel text right here, go to the text, we're going to get rid of the A and replace it with a space. Get rid of the V, replace it with replace it with a space, and get rid of the L and replace it, replace it with a space. Okay, so now we have every other character, but we need to also do that on the instance text. So let's go to instance text, right click, and we're going to go um, replace this. I'm going to right click on the text, and we're going to say D instance, and we'll put Marvel back in. And this time we're going to get rid of the odd letters. So get rid of the M, the V, and the E. And take now that we have that, we can take this transform, and I'm just going to delete it, and all the text fits back into place and it's looking really good. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just to kind of space it out, but because it's all set up, this is really easy to do. So I'm going to make the horizontal. So now we have our Marvel text with the alternating shifted letters. Really easy to do. We're able to do it in two text nodes. Okay, now this is on a blue background and you'll notice that right here you can actually kind of see the gradient background through these letters. That's not happening with our logo. So, okay, let's take a background node and drag it into the node area. And we're going to put that in viewer one. Let's go to two viewers here. And we're going to put the uh, the main one in viewer two. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to basically just copy the gradient. It's really simple. So with background two, we're going to set the type to gradient. And we're going to click on this first point here. And this is where it's black. Let's click on the eyedropper. And we're going to move it way up into this upper corner here. We're going to grab that blue color. And then click on the second arrow here, which is the white from the gradient over here. I'm going to use the dropper. I'm going to move this all the way down to the bottom here and get this kind of a lighter lighter blue color. And you see we already kind of have a gradient started. Now what we're going to do is going to kind of move these around and we're going to set the gradient type. So go to gradient type and we want this one to be radial. And you see we got a kind of dark area. Put it on the bottom and bring this one up to the top. Okay so obviously we did this backwards. It's supposed to be going from light to dark in the corners. So we're just going to take these little arrows and move them. We're just flip them. We're going to take the light one and move it to the left and the darker one and move it over to the right. And we, we're already having a similar kind of gradient. And we're going to take this and merge it on top of the reference image. Okay, now we have the Marvel text 
on the baby on the background gradient but we need the letters to show through so we're going to kind of do some real quick masking with that i have a lot of videos on this but you can kind of think of mask as a black and white image so wherever there's black nothing is going to show wherever there's something white that you're going to be able to see it so let's just turn this marble into a black and white image so go to the marble text and we're going to set the text color to black because we don't want to see that text we want that to be masked out so that we're not seeing it and we'll go to the this instance here doesn't matter either one go to shading and we're going to set the color to white so that means we want to see the white and we don't want to see the black and we're going to take a background node we're just going to put this right here and let's put it in viewer one and we're going to set the color to, might as well set it to, to a kind of a red there. And we're going to take the output of these two text, node, text nodes, which is the Marvel block text, and put it into the mask input of the background. And you'll see that we got that now. This is just using the alpha channels. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to click on this background, go to settings, and we're going to change the channel to luminance. And there we go. We got the block text where the letters are is cut out. Now, in our example, we want this to be white. So we're going to take this background and go back to color. And let's set it to white. And we're going to take the background and we're going to merge it into this transform. And take a look at what we got now. Go back to the media out. Um, we can take our, our this background and let's bring the alpha down so we can kind of see our reference image again. So now we just need to space it. Now you see that these letters are a little bit off white. And we can go back to our background and pick the color, do the color picker and kind of bring it in here. There may be a little gradient on there, but this is going to probably be good enough. And we're going to take the, uh, let's go to the merge. I'm going to bring down the blend just a little bit. Kind of get an idea. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. Um, you also notice that there's a little, uh, the letters are a little bit, a uh, little bit blurry. So let's add a blur in here. And with merge three selected, hit this blur node. And there you go. We just got a little, little bit of a blur. Kind of make it so it's not quite so clean. Obviously, you could choose different fonts and do different things, but this is the basics of how you might set it up. So now we're going to take this transform node. We have our marble text and we're just going to slide it back down and it's going to be sit right on top of there. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. And let's take our background and bring the opacity back up. And there we go. There we're starting with our marble text. All right. Now for the kind of one of the easier ones, we're going to make the star. So let's uh, slide this media out over and I'm going to just kind of fix this up, clean up this node tree just a little bit. Okay, so we're making the star, so let's turn our reference image back on. We're going to just get our background and bring the alpha down. And that's the star that we're going to make. So um, to use to do the star, we're going to use the shape system. Hit in the node area, hit control space, search for S star. Control space, S render. All those shape, shape nodes need a render. And we're going to take the output of this render and merge it right on top of everything. And we have a huge big star. We're just going to set it to five points and go to style and we're going to slide this over a little bit so we can get the grab the color the co use this color picker slide it over right on this blue arrow on that right on the blue star and do that so now we got a blue star there and let's just make it a little bit smaller right click on height expression and tie it into the width i think they'll probably hopefully they'll get this fixed up eventually where you don't have to make an expression there and we'll slide it down and let's just move it over and adjust the, uh, like that, close enough. And we're gonna animate this in just a bit, but um, that is the star. All right, for all you guessers, um, animation B. The second one, that was the one that I did. Animation A is the pro Marvel version. Uh, mine's not too bad. Theirs is probably a lot better because it probably costs more. That's what I would matter, I would guess. So, you know, more dollars equals better. Isn't that right? Okay, we'll see. Okay, guys, that was uh, part one. Hope you enjoyed it. And part two, I'm going to do it. Hopefully, we'll be able to get it out tomorrow so you won't have to wait too long because I know you're really excited to make this animation. Um, so part two is going to have the uh, animating the studio text with some lines um, and doing a little bit of the star and the photo frames, kind of finishing it up and making it really nice. Thanks for watching and uh, look forward to part two tomorrow, hopefully.